All right. Hi, guys. We're doing the video on how to take the uh, intake manifolds apart. So here's my old one. Uh, this one's defective. It's uh, the flaps inside the, uh, the linkage is broken. Here's a good intake manifold over here. Uh, basically, I've got this here just as a reference. The electronic motors are all connected. Everything looks really good. This right here is, is what we're concerned about. This is the torque flap lever. So not really a big intake, uh, not really a big difference, obviously. I mean, you guys know what a good intake manifold looks like. We're going to be concentrating on that one, as that's what we're going to be taking apart. Before we start taking it apart, I'll introduce my camera girl. Hi, guys. It's my uh, seven-year-old daughter who's very helpful. So the tools that we're going to use is a dead blow, and we're going to use the dead blow to tap the screwdrivers in. Stay right where you're at. So what I do is I get a really thin nose flathead, a little bit of a, uh, a fatter nose flathead, and then two standards, and, and you'll see how all this works. Uh, the bolts that are holding the intake manifold together, they're Torx bolts, they're, they're T30s. So walk you through how this works back over here so the t30 bolts run along this line right here so you see this line right here i'm going to pull it off we've already separated the intake manifolds you see it separates right here okay so this line is is what we're what we're looking at what we're working with so you've got follow my finger babe so you've got back up just a taste so you've got you've got bolts one two, three, four, five. You're going to have those on each side. And then the reason I had to take the motor off is the motor sits here, essentially, right? Uh, more than that, but in, uh, sit, sits right here. So what we have to do is you have to take the motor out because there's two bolts that come up from underneath on this side. One right here and one right here. And I'll show you why that's that's important in a minute. Stay right where you're at. Stay right where you're at. So there you also have those bolts on the underside here. Right here and right here, right here and right here. So you've got the top bolts that come in right here all the way down. And then you got a couple that go in from underneath. So what's important about taking out the motor and the reference on on these bolts that come underneath is that this is where you're going to want to start and you're going to want to tap in your flathead and you're going to want to do it in this area and I'll show you why in a second so this area right here is a good place to start and once you get your flathead in it's just a little bit of a twist then you're going to move up to the next size flathead and you're going to kind of move around a little bit, right? So you want to start on this side of the intake manifold. It's a great place to start. So let me show you why we want to start there. When you have your intake manifold done, you split it apart. This is the bottom half. So let's move that. And then this is the top half. So this is where all your flaps are that break. And as you can... We'll get to that in a second. So the reason that one area I showed you was so important is because there's a lip here, right here, where you can't push the screwdriver in any further. And the biggest gap in the lip is located in this area and then back on the other side, on the other area. So essentially on the face and the back of the intake manifold. So this is the underside where the intake is, but you, you, you need to tap the screwdrivers in here to start creating the brake. And right here you can see the lip that goes around, and then you can see the ledge right here where they, where they lock together. So you follow this around. And in this these areas right here, this is where your seal is. You've got some seal in here too as well, but this is where your seal is. This is the uh, this is the bottom. So when you're resealing the intake manifold, you want to walk around that ledge after after you've done all your work and reseal it. But again, this is where you want to start because you're able to get your screwdriver in here the furthest. 
If you try to put your screwdriver in anywhere else, you're going to keep hitting this ledge right there. You're not going to be able to get in very far. Even, even here as you go on the sides, it's the same thing. You're going to be running into this lip, and you're not going anywhere. <clears throat> and if you really get too aggressive, that's when you end up breaking stuff. And this is the top half. This is, this is where all the important stuff is, so you really want to be careful. Um, so what, what actually breaks, right? So you can see when these flaps move, they're moving from one runner position to the other, creating a distance where it diverts the air from the short runner to the long runner, right? So you can see all these are moving, but you see two aren't right here, right? These are the ones that are broken. So these two cylinders were never going from long runner to short runner. They're just there. And what happens is, and we've got some pictures obviously, that right there, it breaks. You can see how it broke in half. And then what goes really bad is this over time keeps going. You get carbon in here. This area right here ends up coming dislodged. These things break. And then when they break, this is, this is the anchor. So I can pull the anchor off. Now watch. See how this moves around? Get in there a little bit better. This anchor moves around. So what you want to do is epoxy the anchor back down and lock these in one position. I definitely do not advise taking these out. If, if you can, you want to disconnect the arm here cut it or do whatever, leave this, leave, leave your actuator, take the motor off, that way you can plug the motor in and not get a code, but once this lever's off and these are locked in one position and epoxied shut, that's it, you're good. And then lock them on, what I would suggest is the long runner for the most torque, because it only switches over to the short runner at about 4,500 RPMs. So you've got, uh, again, You've got the lip in here when you're getting in here for the screwdriver. These are the actuators. Here's my JHM intake spacers, which are really helpful. And then, just to quickly show you what we're dealing with here, this is the bottom half. And so what do the two motors do, right? So. Let me explain how this works. These are the tumble flaps. And you see how closed off that is? Now it closes more, but I just stopped it here to show you. These are the tumble flaps. So this is your torque restrictor. It closes off a good part of the cylinder so you don't have air flowing through it. Flowing all the way through, and the tumble flaps activated. The good thing about your JHM tune, Leaves them open. Otherwise, you're driving around, and this is why you're losing power. So the JHM tune opens them up like that, but these uh, they still leave them working on cold start, so the car starts up nice. All right, so just to kind of recap here, basically intake manifold. Here, babe, can you hold it? Intake manifold splits apart, but the only way to get it apart to get your screwdriver in and break this seal. Here's the lip right here where they're, two, they're connected. Again, you gotta break that seal. You're not gonna be able to get in there to break that seal. Here's your reference point where you can get the screwdriver in the furthest. You just start real easy. Get your screwdriver, get your dead blow, tap it in. Obviously, we're tapping in here, which is further and it'll break apart. A couple quick tips. Again, if you're gonna reseal it, this is where all of your, uh, your, your RTV will go. You'll put it in the ledge all the way down, and that's what creates the seal. You'll, I'll, I'll show a picture of, of, of the air ride separator, which I took out, um, just to make it a little bit easier to explain. <coughs> Excuse me, but again, in here, Start turning it, and then they'll break apart. I'll take some pictures, and we'll do a long-winded uh, type right up that'll probably help. But I hope this is enough to uh, give you guys an idea. If you have any questions, let's put them in the thread, and we'll go along and answer them.